There are some peculiarities in mathematics in, in, in vector calculus where I think it's um, the divergence theorem or Stokes theorem and, and Green's theorem which states the equivalence of, of counting um, volume integrals and comparison, comparing them and, and achieving equality with, with certain surface integrals. Um, so it's not unexpected, given certain assumptions, that these things these things get outputted. But what is clear is that the so-called holographic nature of the universe is far from demonstrated, and it's um, hand waving lay glossed over in well, the lay in the lay. In well, I think the thing is, the point is that the mathematics of entropy matches the mathematics of studying quantum information, right? So that, that's the reason for thinking there's some sort of relation. When we find that, uh, you know, in ancient times, we, somebody invents conic structures and it turns out to be important to, say, celestial mechanics, you know, the parabolas and hyperbolas, they all appear in celestial mechanics um, I think that uh, you know that the, that if we were to discover that um, you know there'd be reason to go ahead and look deeply at those formula and say well what are those formula really representing uh, what are the patterns you know if the world is as if it's information uh, then you know information energy entropy those are just words the most important thing is how do they work and that's what these this mathematics is is telling us how they interrelate what the patterns how they influence each other interpretation that is handed over and it becomes an, uh, just yet another um, physics woo concept see okay this is, reminds me one see one thing I wanted to say is I think really a, a, a funny ironic part of this is that in a way, talking about things like the holographic universe and the universe folding in on itself and stuff like that is, uh, is really an attempt to preserve locality, which in some sense will be preserved in the end because we'll change our notion of locality. I mean, I think it's turning out that our concept of locality, we think it's nearby in space, but really it's causally nearby. So if two part particles are entangled and have some sort of a causality at a distance, we're going to end up interpreting that as no actually in some space right they're close together because i think we're going to preserve the the sense of causality and if two things that appear far apart in space uh, seem to to have some sort of causal relationship some sort of interrelation we're going to interpret that as them being close together in some other space and that's where this is all coming from. And it's not woo-woo except for, you know, ever since we found out the Earth wasn't the center of the universe, you know, we've had some surreal things to face, right? And, um, you know, and this would be one of them. But it's not, it's not, a, a, it, it's not believed in because it's surreal. That makes it hard for everyone to believe in. But we're figuring out that reality compared to our common intuition you know, is this could be described as surreal, but really the error is obviously going to turn out to be in our intuitions, right? So to the degree that our minds are flexible enough to get better a sense of, of what's going on and how things work, then um, the better off we are. You know, there might be limits to that, to what we can understand given our evolution and, and the, what, what our mind has evolved to understand. But we know we can also push those limits and, and through abstractions get deeper and deeper understandings of things that at first might seem counterintuitive and then later, you know, nobody frets too much about that, you know, they're on a round planet and can go forward uh, long enough to come back to where they are. You know, it, it makes perfect sense to us now. And I think the same thing can and probably will happen with uh, relativity and quantum mechanics uh, or whatever it is they become to sell books and, and, and such like. Well, that's not fair. You The, the talk that was given to you is about, that you were talking about, or that we watched, not given to you, that you gave or referenced or whatever, um, you know, that's it's a professor at Lawrence Berkeley Lab, Susskind, 
these people are doing this for scientific purposes it's not to sell books and I don't think that's fair I mean we're not talking about what the bleep we're well beyond the what the bleep uh, mentality on these kinds of things aren't we what else did you talk about um, I don't remember field street space hmm I don't know. I don't I'm remember. Through my notes. I originally had some notes for the video, but I don't know where they are. I don't keep my note. Well, I did yeah, so usually. They the show video, up later. Okay. Um, by virtue of E equals M C squared right. uh, and gravity, we understand that. Whenever we try to compact information um, and energy in, into a restricted area, we are always going to create black holes. Now, of course, I admit the existence of black holes as regions that light can't escape from. But whether their ultimate nature is infinities and singularities is a completely open question. I think, though, that like Hawking had proved to everybody's satisfaction that light will escape from a black hole because of quantum interactions at the surface of the black hole. It is possible for there to be a kind of energy tunneling and that that's assured to happen. So that's the odd thing. That in one sense, when looked at by the theory that posited their existence in the first place, general relativity, you'd think the light could never escape. But in a, a quantum universe, in reality, there is a path for it to escape. And the whole debate was whether that was the old light escaping or, in some sense, new light, new information. And, you know, the way they settled the bet, not that they're correct, is that it is the old light escaping. Um, in some sense, it's the same, informa you know, causal informational chain. Uh, that's leading to the to the energy that's uh, radiated. Um, and seemingly, quite obviously, um, meaningless. If you, if you admit infinities, you, you lose all all meaning, uh, as, they, as often is said. I think it's funny because it's just that, I mean, of all the people, it's the mathematical people that I know, people educated and love mathematics for its own sake, that usually would defend the reality of infinity. But I agree, um, because we're talking also here about, oh, infinite densities of space or infinite uh, velocities. And so far in science, it's usually been a sign of an error um, from using the mathematics, you know, where whatever we're using to approximate reality that does something weird mathematically uh, when applied, you know, where it wasn't originally meant to apply. And so this is the motivation behind um, the um, analysis of a different problem and asking what, how much information can we pack into a certain region before we create a um, event horizon of that volume right and that's the weird thing it's like that the the question makes sense when we're saying how much energy and mass can we pack in if we get it so close together then there's an event horizon and it turns out that that's one-to-one -one relationship uh, to how much information you could get in there right and it's at the point of information where you have enough mass to cause the black hole to exist then that amount of information the black hole will exist so you can't have more information than uh, will fit in this event horizon because as soon as you get to that point you have a black hole and putting more in just expands the event horizon and and the, the weird part we should be paying attention to that they're paying attention to is 
wow, the mathematics of that, looking at all this information and packing information in, goes one to one to entropy. And so you have the quantum computing uh, type uh, quantum physicist now pointing out that, well, see, this is information theory. Entropy is information in chaotic systems, information you don't know, whereas information is what the entropy becomes when it is known. <laughs> okay. Or even knowable in some sense, when there's a pattern there from which it can be deduced even. Um, okay, and so that's the weird part that it's related to these ideas of, of knowledge and induction and stuff, but we're talking about information. This is us bridging the gap. If we really have a good representation of information in nature, suddenly we will have bridged the, the gap between studying nature and our experience of nature because we experience nature as information. I will test the links. You'll see uh, my most recent comment with, with timing indexed points and conclusions of myself about what's going on at that point in time. Um, and you'll see some older comments if you care to view it. Um, one of the central criticisms I have it is posed by the audience as a question. and. He, the lecturer um, never really explains this uh, without without to say, oh, it's it's a bit really bit technical and uh, you know, but I think you can be sure the answer is based upon yet more dubious assumptions, given um, the qualitative and quantitative looks uh, and, and, and explanations that that he's already alluded to. Well, see, I think the thing is here that um, uh, you got to stop this. I got autoplay now and everything. So I, I think the thing is, is that uh, it's not so much these assumptions. It's just like if you encode information on photons and then try to pack those photons as tightly as you can, you find out that the amount of information you can pack together is equal to the amount of information that could be stored if you had Planck length bits on the surface. So that's a weird coincidental relationship. And these things are important in science. I mean, in the speed of light was figured out several different ways. And the fact that these numbers, it's like, hey, I was looking for the speed of electromagnetic wavy radiation. Look, this is the speed. And other people are all calculating and measuring these uh, different uh, uh, formula. And they turn out to be all equal, have the speed of light emerge. You know, it starts to be like, well, we should figure out why that's the same in all of those cases. So anyway, um, cheers. Thanks for the video.